Hey guys, welcome back to One Stop Biology. I hope you all are good and your preparation is going fine. So in today's video, we are going to start a new chapter, which is chapter three of class twelfth NCR. Okay. So remember that we are right now doing an NCRT series wherein I am going to cover all the chapters of class 11th and 12th. And once we are done with that, we will start off with different books as well. Okay. So basically, the third chapter of NCRT class 12th is all about human reproduction. Now we all know that humans they sexually reproduce and they are viviparous. They produce an offspring right so in this video of human reproduction we are going to study the male reproductive system right so if we talk about human reproduction so human reproduction includes first the formation of gametes now which is known as gametogenesis so in the case of males it is sperm and in the case of females it is ovum so first gametogenesis happens then the sperm is transferred into the female genital tract through insemination and then this female and male gametes fuse to form zygote which is fertilization now once the zygote is formed that develops into blastocyst and it attaches into the uterine wall which is nothing but implantation of zygote now once it it is implanted to the uterine wall it develops into an offspring through which is the gestation period in uh, you know the gestation period when which it develops into an offspring and then it is delivered outside the female body so delivery of the baby which is known as parturition right so this is the entire process of human reproduction which is actually very complex so let's start off with the male and female reproductive systems first so let's see what is male reproductive system all about right so the male reproductive system basically is located in the pelvis region it is located in the pelvic region right so this here the structure that you see this structure this is the pelvic region of a male male human right so this includes what male reproductive system includes testis right and then along with that there are various ducts there are glands and there is an external genitalia right so there is a, an external genitalia there is testis accessory ducts and accessory glands so these together form the male reproductive system okay now let's talk about the testis so before we uh, you know talk about the different parts let's label this diagram which is nothing but you know the male pelvis region which shows the reproductive system so here you see that there is uh, you know some excretory organs as well like you'll see ureter here okay now you will see even the urinary bladder because that as well is part of the pelvis region right these are the seminal vesicles so guys just remember the name and where it is located we are going to study each and every structure one by one okay then this is known as vas deferens you have prostate this is the external genitalia which is known as penis inside that you have urethra as well you have the you know tip of penis which is glands penis you have the foreskin here you have the <coughs> testis scrotum right this is the ejaculatory duct you have rectum anus for excretion and the, these are the glands this is known as the 
बल्बो यूरिथ्रल ग्लैंड सो रिमेंबर दिस डायग्राम दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट गाइज रिमेंबर दैट दिस चैप्टर इन टोटल इज इंपॉर्टेंट विथ योर प्रिपरेशन ऑफ नीट यू जी एंड बोर्ड राइट सो यूल हैव टू रिमेंबर ऑल दीज टर्म्स एंड आई ऑल्सो एक्सप्लेन ऑल दीज टर्म्स इन डिटेल वन बाई वन ओके सो रिमेंबर दिस डायग्राम प्रैक्टिस इज सेवरल टाइम्स फाइल यू आर स्टार्टिंग दिस चैप्टर ओके सो वॉट हैपन्स सो लेट सी वॉट testis is first right so testis is situated outside the abdominal cavity and it is situated within a pouch right so this pouch is known as scrotum now why it is outside the body outside the abdominal cavity because the scrotum helps in maintaining low temperature of testis so as per the normal internal body temperature the temperature of scrotum is 2 to 2.5 degree celsius lower than the normal body temperature and why is it necessary because this temperature has to be maintained for spermatogenesis for the formation of sperms which carry the male gamete okay now testis in adults is oval in shape and it has a length of almost 4 to 5 cm and width of 2 to 3 cm uh, guys remember that i am talking about adults okay now testis also has a dense covering and each testis has almost 250 compartments these compartments are known as testicular lobules right now each of this lobule so each testis has 250 testicular lobule and each lobule we study this diagram as well right so each lobule remember that contains 1 to 3 each lobule contains 1 to 3 highly coiled seminiferous tubules right and the sperms are produced in these seminiferous tubules so basically each testis has 250 compartments which are known as testicular lobules and each of these 250 lobules of a testis have 1 to 3 they can be 1 or 3 1 or 2 or 3 seminiferous tubules where sperms are produced so let's see this diagram as well in detail for the male reproductive system so here again you have the urinary bladder so this is the urinary bladder you have the ureter right now here this is vas deferens this is seminal vesicle you have prostate you have the gland the bulbo urethral gland then you have the urethra inside the penis this is the testis this is the foreskin you have the glans penis now here see this in details this is known as epi the dimus then you have vasa efferentia this is recte testis and these are the testicular lobules okay so these are the lobules different lobules right so this is the structure of the male reproductive system again i would ask you to practice it again and again for your boards and you should remember all these terminologies right so we till now we saw that what is testis what does it has what is the shape it is within scrotum right each testis has 250 compartments 
these compartments are known as testicular lobe testicular lobules then we saw that these have one to three highly coiled seminiferous tubules and where sperms are produced right now each seminiferous tubule is lined on its inside by two types of cell one is the male germ cell which has which is basically nothing but which which develops into spermatogonia or sperms and the other are sertoli cells so the male germ cell the spermatogonia undergoes meiotic division and that finally develops into sperm that leads to sperm formation and the sertoli cells provide nutrition to these germ cells right now the region outside the seminiferous tubule is known as interstitial spaces so there are certain spaces outside the seminiferous tubules right and these spaces contain small blood cells and then they have interstitial cells as well which are known as leydig cells now these leydig cells synthesize and secrete testicular hormones which are known as androgens so these hormones presence of these hormones are required for again development of sperms right so here in the diagram if we see the seminiferous tubule diagram here you see that there are sperm cells which are spermatogonia then you have developed sperms this is spermatozoa then you have sertoli cells inside right so this helps in nourishment and then you have interstitial cells which are also known as leydig cells and these cells synthesize the testicular hormone so they synthesize and secrete the testicular hormone which are nothing but androgens and these hormones are very much required for formation of sperms right so apart from this apart from the structure there are various male accessory duct sex accessory duct as well which include this rete testis vas afferentia epididymis and vas deferens so in the previous Uh, uh, the structures, the diagrams. We saw these four names, right? The rete testis, vas afferentia, epididymis, and vas deferens, right? So the seminiferous tubules of testis they opens into vas afferentia through the rete testis. So these are various ducts. So the seminiferous tubules opens into vas afferentia through rete testis. and this vas afferentia leaves the testis and open into epididymis which is located along the posterior surface of each testis now this epididymis leads to vas deferens that ascends to the abdomen and it loops over the urinary bladder so this basically duct it receives a duct from the seminal vesicle which opens into urethra as ejaculatory duct so that epididymis basically opens into the ejaculatory duct and these ducts store and transport sperm from testis to the outside through the urethra through the uh, basic structure that we have through the genitalia that the male organ male uh, um, male human has right basically right so these urethra originate from the urinary bladder and it extends through the external genitalia which is penis to its external opening which is known as urethral meatus right so basically penis is the male external genitalia and is made of special tissue that helps in erection of the penis to facilitate insemination okay to facilitate the transfer of sperm into the female body now the in there is an enlarged end of penis which is glans penis so if you see the 
previous the first very first diagram here this is the enlarged portion of the penis which is known as glans penis right so this is the region of glans penis right so and that glans penis is covered by a loose fold of skin which is known as foreskin right apart from this external genitalia there are male accessory glands as well so till now we have covered what all things we have covered testis right so we have covered testis we have covered accessory ducts so testis produces sperms these accessory ducts transfer the sperm from testis to the main genitalia which is penis so we have covered penis as well and then there are various accessory glands as well right so now the male accessory glands include first seminal vesicles the other is prostate and then there are bulbo urethral glands so basically we have seminal vesicles we have prostate and paired bulbo urethral glands now secretion of these glands constitute the seminal plasma now this seminal plasma is rich in fructose calcium and certain in certain enzymes and these so basically this this plasma this secretion helps the sperm to be active and alive for a certain period of time so basically these glands provide the uh, the what you can say that the plasma or you know the base on which which nourishes the sperm right and that makes the sperm active and alive for a certain period of time now similar to that we have secretions of bulbo urethral glands and this secretion helps in lubrication of the penis while insemination right so with this guys we have finished the male reproductive part i hope you understood all the different parts of the male reproductive system guys i am going a bit faster because i want to cover the entire ncert and then again at least one more book for you guys so if you want my pace to be a bit slower or if you want me you know to be slower while i am making videos please do let me know and if you have any doubt with respect to the male reproductive system please do not hesitate in either texting me on the comment of the video or you can also directly message me on whatsapp the number is given in the description of the video also guys if you need detailed notes of this chapter the entire chapter for ncert you can visit my website onestopbiology.com and you will get all the notes of ncert related to what i'm teaching okay these are all curated handwritten notes by me okay and if you have understood uh, the content of this video the male reproductive system please do not forget to like the video and share it with your friends and do subscribe to the channel to get all the updates thanks guys bye bye